propose that you travel with me to meet the countries of the European Union and the citizens who make them happy. Ready for one of our destinations? Okay, let's go! Italy, whose capital is Rome, shares its northern continental borders with France, Switzerland, Austria and Slovenia. Italian unification came in the 19th century. In World War I, Italy fought in the side of the Allies, but under the rule of the fascist leader Benito Mussolini, it waged a war against the Allied powers in World War II. As founding member of the European Union, Italy joined it in 1958, before joining the Eurozone in 1999. Even if the differences are less striking today, Italy still presents two contrasting profiles, the industrial and dynamic north and the more rural south, with higher unemployment rates. As our interviewees point out, this north-south difference is at the heart of many political issues. Uh, practically, <laughs> historically, uh, I think especially after the unification of Italy, uh, the South was a bit left behind, even if they tried many times to like make it more developed, but historically it has always been a bit more undeveloped, because it's always been more like based on agriculture, while the North has always been more... Industrial. Um, Industrial, like the, all the first industries were all built in the north, and so people started migrating to the north, and so the south has always be, been a bit left behind uh, politically, unfortunately, due to the crisis, the economic crisis. Like it was stressed by the crisis for sure. A lot of northern people started to stress this fact of that like the north is richer is like the one that mm, makes the country go on you know and the south is just like um, food and beautiful landscape and yeah so they created this political party which is going really well and this is really frightening um, which is called the Lega Nord and it's gaining a lot of popularity and not even in the not just in the north which is crazy yeah because they're the also very like um you know they're always stressing this identity of italian people uh, being christian we don't want any immigrants and uh you know these kind of things they didn't want to like separate uh the country like the northern part of italy as of making a country out of it but they wanted to like make different laws for the north and different laws for the south you know like an independent region of the north you know but i think uh it can be it will done. never happen no. okay yeah. uh probably even because the church is so strong in italy like this is maybe a theory of mine i don't know if it's something like i don't know but you know rome is really really powerful and also because there's the church in Rome it's really powerful and I think they will never let the North do something like that. Italy is divided into 20 regions each with its own cultural identity, traditions and dialects. There are five autonomous regions in Italy that have a special statute that gives them greater autonomy than other Italian regions in managing their internal affairs and formulating their own laws and policies. However, they remain subject to Italian law and constitution and are represented in the Italian parliament. Speaking of regions, there is uh, this situation of the Three, uh, we say 
uh, regions with uh, a special state. It is so special that each region or province has a, a special one. I think, uh, for example, uh, Sicily has uh, special powers when it comes to administrative law and administrative justice. Other regions uh, don't have the same special state. In Trentino, for example, we have the, I don't know, a special law about uh, languages because they were Austrian, so they speak German as a, we can say, first language. So they teach German at school. Uh, you won't find German in the other regions. So, I mean, each province and region has uh, something special and uh, we should go in detail. And uh, now I made uh, two big examples that, in my opinion, might risk to uh, compromise uh, the unity of the state in this sense. Because when you go up north and they don't speak Italian, you're like, it's a bit weird. <laughs> Not all of them, but uh, all people that uh, love uh, to be Austrian, they pretend not to speak Italian to understand it, you know. In Italy, is, um, one, one thing that is very important are the dialects that tells a lot about the culture of the place. As dialects, every little city, every little place in Italy has their own um, hand signs. For example, in Milan, in Lombardy, we say when we don't want to do something, we say balsa, which is like a jam. Or for example, when, we, when you want to do something a little bit sketchy, funny, you can do this like, ah, <laughs> for example. In Italy, we have a, a problem with the uh, state machinery and uh, the public administration is uh, definitely part of it. Uh, an aspect in this sense about uh, how the administration works is uh, the division of competencies between the state and the regions. It is in Article 117 of the Constitution, and uh, the last reform was in 2001, and actually it created a lot of, uh, uh, of, um, of problems uh, between regions and state because uh, no uh, public authority was uh, sure of uh, which competences it had. So regions were not uh, sure of uh, their power of exercising uh, a competence, so they refrained from uh, making, for example, actions, and the state was not called to make those actions. So at the end, we didn't have uh, any authority doing something, you know. During the pandemic, we saw this problem because the state uh, was called to save people's lives during the pandemic, but that was a competence of regions. Of course, northern regions are richer than southern regions, so people in the north were safer of southern, but uh, Lombardy in the north uh, has been less uh, efficient than regions of the south, uh, so we were like, we are in a mess and we need to do something, but no reform is on the table, so let's see. Fascism was a nationalist, totalitarian, political and social movement that emerged in Italy in 1919, after the end of the First World War. Its creator was Benito Mussolini, who ruled Italy from 1922 to 1945. Known for having persecuted opposition leaders and minorities, our interviewees will tell us about the Italian memory of fascism. I think that uh, Italians are still trying to elaborate and uh, overcome the fascist period. Uh, it led us to war, it uh, made uh, laws about uh, killing people of other ethnicities at that age of other races. Of course we are not proud of the uh, world period of fascism and etc. We can tell about the partisans during the Second World War. Um, they were a group of uh, people that uh, fought the um, fascism from the intern of the country. And so this is a part that I'm very proud of. The partisans they have like represented something strong for us and there's still like this how can you say uh, yeah, this legacy a... of partisans I think a lot like in schools um, like this anti-fascist yeah we develop a really anti-fascist like not everyone there are still yeah. people who don't actually think that fashion was all bad you know Because it was a period of growth, economically, and they felt like they were part of this nation that could rely on itself 
and not on other countries. The problem is uh, in the past 10 years, like we haven't had a, a party that lasted, like a government that lasted for more than two years. Um, in the parliament, the parties, like the party don't, doesn't have enough um, votes. So they make coalitions, but in the end, they don't have the same ideas and everything is very confused. They don't have like a very charismatic figure that can lead the country. In Italy, I think we have a, a, an atavistic problem that's uh, the functioning, the effectiveness and the efficiency of our public administration. Some infrastructures and uh, public uh, goods and operas have been made during the fascism period. So, of course, if you compare how our public administration and how our rules regarding public administration work, definitely we are not as efficient as a fascism period. I make an example. If I want to create a, a square, I will need to make a, a, a public procurement, which must be non-discriminatory, must be open to all the European actors. So, I mean, it, it is connected to inclusion, to equality, of course, if I was uh, a fascist government, I would have said, uh, you, friend of mine, uh, will make this square, you will get the control of uh, and the ownership of uh, all the shops on the square, you will, you will make money in this way. I mean, yeah, of course, I will uh, build the square in maybe in three years and not in 20. So it is still a problem how our uh, public infrastructure are too long. But that's a way to confuse uh, the effectiveness of uh, a dictatorship with... Uh, uh, I mean, the, the tragical behavior of uh, the fascist authorities. Of course, the point is that 90%, 80% of what he did was actually, like, horrible. Yeah. As Europe's largest producer of rice, fruit, vegetables and wine, Italy is one of the European Union's major agricultural powers. Intra-European Union trade accounts for 51% of Italy's exports and for 58% of Italy's imports. One of the countries hardest hit by the Covid crisis, Italy is the main beneficiary of the European Union recovery plan, with 69 billion euros in subsidies. In addition, for several years now, Italy has been one of the countries most exposed to migratory flows. Rome is committed to straightening European cooperation in the management of migration with countries of origin and transit. Uh, uh, yes. 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 I am in favor of the EU because I think there is a lot to do and we need to change it. So, I love it so much that I don't like it. That's uh, almost a paradox, but uh, I would overcome the internal market system, I would uh, make a more fundamental right uh, system. And, uh, I mean, I think all together we can create an example of society that uh, in history is, uh, it will be a novelty, because uh, we can unify people of uh, different uh, origins, cultures, uh, habits, in a single, uh, not state, but in a single society based on common values, so that would be, uh, I don't know, like a tale nowadays. Ciao! Bye bye, au revoir, au revoir, au revoir, no, I cannot say in Romanian, uh, au revoir, but... Ciao!